Well, hello, X Traders, and we are going to make a quick trade uh, recap, if you will. Um, it's I actually have it because I started writing it down on a document over here. So this is what I actually want to start out with. So um, I'm basically comparing Baba and Spy, but the reason I'm comparing them is because uh, because of mainly price action and MACD. So a lot of times people will obviously uh, take an indicator and you know basically go all in and start trading based on the indicator and uh, and then pay attention to nothing else and eventually they'll run into you know analysts or experts or you know traders with a lot of experience will tell them well you can't base your trades solely on an indicator and you know you basically come to the conclusion that well it's actually a combination of a bunch of stuff and usually you'll hear the combination of price action volume and some sort of indicator well um, here uh, was a perfect example and um, I was looking at Baba because Baba was alerted today and I'm trying to see if I can make this a little bit bigger on screen I'm, we're actually gonna look at the chart in a little bit but I kinda wanted it you know to save some of the spoiler excitement by looking at the actual initial chart. So basically, Baba was hitting or hit today, uh, which is May 11th, by the way. Uh, this uh, what seemed to be resistance right here, the yellow line, which is the resistance that I had, which is also the purple. It happens to be the purple line, which is the point of control line. So that's a resistance zone or area there, um, and. One of my indicators on TradingView marked it as uh, well uh, as a swing, you know, as a as a swing point, and um, and lo and behold, a few minutes later, and then uh, you know it came back up to that indicator or to that resistance level and bounced off of it again, or seemed to bounce off of it again. As you can see, it wicked right there, uh, and so we run into the, um, you know. Uh, the whole uh, deal of is this going to break through that resistance area uh, or is it going to be a double top and then just you know melt down basically which is why I had written uh, in my notes here you know was it gonna go uh, keep going up or was it just going to melt back down under after breaking out maybe a little bit or just immediately not even without with a breakout just you know just bounce back down um, so looking at the MACD uh, if you can see here, uh, the MACD is uh, obviously trending. It's above the zero line, and the fast indicator is above the slow indicator. Uh, so, because both lines were above the zero line, then we could take this as well. Yeah, it's already above the zero line. So, if this price action is moving in, or trending in an upward fashion, and it is above the indicator, then above the zero line sorry then it becomes a valid trend you could still get this you know this price action uh, happening but if the lines are not above the zero line which is what the MACD indicator uh, basically requires then it's not a momentum that is going to carry through right so I was basically faced uh, with this right so okay so it hit once it looks like it's hitting again and actually if you can see here because this was a few minutes later this is already showing uh, the next candle to be a bullish uh, well, not a well yeah it's a green candle right and it seems to be wanting to break through that red uh, horizontal line the the resistance that the indicator drew so basically you sh you're sitting here and you're trying to decide well is this thing going to be a double bottom and hit head back down you know, in which case you probably want to buy puts, or is this going to go through? You know, break out, and then you want to go long. Uh, so, I what I did was I'm going to jump over to Spy without before coming here because Spy was doing something similar. Look at this; it came up here and it hit this line, which was drawn again by my indicator as a new swing, uh, and we have this previous. Uh, uh, swing resistance drawn here by the same indicator it's just that it's in a dotted line because it's from previous session okay and it actually kind of overlaps with this one as well so this whole zone here all right is obviously a significant 
zone that is being marked as, in this case, resistance. And it could become resistance if it hits once, and then it keeps trying to hit again twice, and then it looks like it's heading back down, right? But look at the MACD lines in this case. In this case, only the fast one is above the zero line. The slow one is still below, and that is key, because that means that this trend might not have enough momentum to actually break through. Okay, so what actually happened, and this is why this is a quick video, on BABA, as you can see, we were looking at this pattern here, which is back here. All right, that's where it hit the first time. This is where it was hitting the second time, and that candle actually broke above, as you can see here, quite clearly. It broke above with a very uh, bullish candle, but it immediately ran back down, right? So that's fine. You wouldn't have taken the trade here because you're not sure if this is going to go melting all the way back down or breaking through back up, all right? But the indicator had told you that it was above the zero line and that therefore the uptrending momentum should be the valid one, okay? Otherwise, this indicator would have been below the zero line and it would have been more of a downtrending or just a, a, a simple undecided, right? So I went ahead and I took the trade, right? I actually believe I took it somewhere back here uh, because I saw, basically over here, because I saw that it was indeed trending on the MACD indicator, okay? And it did break above and it immediately came back down, right? But it didn't break my... Uh, my stop loss or my exit level, which is right here. You can see the trading view tool. Um, this is the red uh, area. This is the entry line. You can sort of see the faded green up here, all the way up to here, which is where my arrow was pointing towards. So it never broke below my exit level, so I did not exit. All right. And after that, as you can clearly see, those MACD lines were still above the zero line. They stayed above the zero line the entire trading session. Right? And it hit back down here. It bounced up against this level again. So this was a very strong resistance point. It came back under. It didn't go below the previous lower low or higher low. Sorry, this was the previous higher low. So it came from this higher low, from this low to this low, which was higher, to that low, which was higher, to this low, which was higher. And it broke through above and it finally managed to stay above. I'm still on this trade because it was a swing trade, if you recall from the alert that was posted. Uh, so this is very clearly uh, you know, reinforcing the idea that the MACD indicator works as long as, you, as long as you combine it with the price action. It's basically telling you that the price action trend is indeed valid. All right? And what happened with SPY? Well, as you recall, only one of those lines was above. And as you can see here, right, this is the first, the first three candles that bounce off of this level. Here they are, the first three candles off of that level. Right? It tried to go back up. It failed again because, remember, this is not just a level. It's a zone. Right? It tried, failed again. It tried a, a third time, and it failed a third time. So basically, after this, if you want to call this a local double bottom or this whole, uh, sorry, double top, or this entire thing a triple top, with that uh, MACD line, the slow line, being below the zero line for when that happened and it could it started to go above the zero line but look at how the histogram shows how that momentum really died down this was not uh, a very positive um, image if you will for the MACD and I believe that's the last one I have the last image I have so I'm going to move over to the chart now but this is what they ended up doing okay so here is uh, the Alibaba one right and you can see it hit once. This is right on this candle is where I took the trade. And it broke above. And then it came back down. And then it hit that second time again, broke above, but barely closed on the entry line. And then from then on, it broke through. And it was able to break through this other, which was basically the upper uh, resistance line of this whole zone right here. It's not letting me for some reason. All right. There it is. Okay, so this is after hours, right? And it it, it, it does seem to have dipped below this uh, area right here, but not below the whole zone. So I'm, I'm still good on this trade, and it, it immediately came back up. All right, so I'm waiting for this. This trade is going to happen. I'm going to close it out tomorrow. 
Uh, and let's see. Let me see if this is going to let me. Yep, the spy one, how it ended. It actually did bounce back up, but not before, or not just before melting down. This is uh, what it looked like. Let me wait for my indicators. My just basically melted from there, right? And it did recover, but look at that. It recovered, and even though it did recover, it basically recovered what it melted. So you want to make sure that you're combining your price action with something like the MACD, and that's a perfect example. Don't just use the MACD because the lines are above. You know, it doesn't mean uh, that it's trending up because price action is moving up it doesn't mean that it's trending up you need at least two to confirm the price action and the uh, one of the indicators in this case the MACD so I hope you found this useful and uh, implement this in your trading and I'll see you on the trading floor have a good one